Welcome everybody to this wildlife photography video and here in the UK we've had some fantastic weather recently for photography. We've had quite a cold snap with some really low temperatures particularly overnight giving some really hard frost first thing in the morning and I just couldn't let that go without getting out and testing this camera uh, the Canon R6. I think I've only had it for about four weeks now but just had to get out there and try to make the most of these conditions. So I've been testing the camera and also trying to get some great wildlife pictures and one of the things that I like to do in the winter if possible is to try and photograph ducks on ice so I do this down at the local park if the temperatures get low enough and preferably low winds then the lake will often freeze over enough that you can get pictures of various ducks and birds kind of walking slipping on the ice and the shot that I was really after which I've tried many many times I was just trying to get that one shot of a duck actually slipping and falling over or at least off balance. So for this I decided to use my Canon 500mm f4 mark 1 lens it's an ef lens uh, with an adapter on the r6 i had my big tripod and the manfrotto fluid head which is very good for the big lens the lighting for this was very important and i was there on a very bright day hardly any clouds in the sky very bright sunshine now this is really helpful because it means i can get the shutter speed up very fast for trying to get this kind of action shot uh, and also means I don't have to push the ISO too high. Now in terms of the sun's position this is very important as well. I wanted to shoot with the sun behind me as much as possible and the reason for that was with it being very bright, quite harsh, um, if you kind of shoot at more of an angle then you can just end up with a bit more contrast. It can be quite difficult to control the exposure. It's harder to control the exposure in those situations. So I wanted to try and get the sun behind me as much as I could. I opted to go for manual exposure with automatic ISO. So I selected my shutter speed that I wanted at about two thousandth of a second to try and get that really fast action shot. I uh, went with an aperture of f5 and the reason for using automatic ISO, uh, the lighting was fairly consistent so I knew it wasn't going to change too much but it did change a bit depending where the ducks were. So if the ducks were further out into the lake then they were lit by the very strong sunshine but if they came a bit closer then they were kind of coming into a bit of shade, uh, maybe a few pools of light as well so the exposure was changing a little bit so having automatic ISO just meant that I could deal with that change when necessary and I used the eye tracking the eye autofocus on this camera for all the shots which have had a good success rate so far with the EF lenses so basically just let the camera find the head the eye of the bird and just try to track it in And I also chose to go with electronic shutter. Now the reason for this is that the shot I'm after can just be so fast as the ducks are walking around, suddenly lose balance and they can slip. Um, it can just happen in such a fraction of a second that I wanted as many, as much of a fast frame rate as I could get. So I set the electronic shutter on my camera, which is 20 frames per second. Now the electronic shutter is fantastic for taking lots of shots for this kind of thing uh, but I did experience the problem that some people will have had as well uh, in that it's so easy to take just so many images and I was just shooting despite the fact I knew that this could be an issue I just kept shooting and sure enough all of a sudden the camera stopped I wouldn't take any more and it actually filled the memory card so it is so easy to do this I did use a little bit of food just to try and help the positioning trying to get the ducks where I wanted them uh, there's a few techniques I've got there but I'm not Going to give all of those away. So I took many many shots during this session, uh, eye tracking, just tracking the ducks as they came in and I actually found the best time to get the shot I was after was more when they were in the distance. So when they first started coming in and running in that's when you were more likely to get those action shots. Once the ducks got a bit closer uh, they kind of slowed down and started feeding. Other ducks and gulls as well got in the way. Now in terms of the tracking, uh, the autofocus tracking worked really really well on the eye focus. Uh, there were times where it, it didn't do it as I would expect. There was a few times maybe where the duck had its head turned, the eye wasn't as obvious or sometimes I think it just changed direction 
or speed very, very suddenly and quickly, and the focus either couldn't lock on or didn't stay locked on. But generally speaking, the success rate was very, very good. Now the lighting conditions, I talked earlier about how I wanted the sun behind me as much as possible. This is one of the biggest problems I had at this session, uh, was that some of the ducks would kind of go off to the right hand side and I was having to shoot, shoot them slightly side lit and that did become more pr problematic. So having to shoot a bit side lit meant there was just a bit more contrast, more stronger shadows. Um, so that wasn't ideal, that was a bit frustrating. Having said that, I think the ice can help alleviate the problem because the ice kind of acts like a, a giant reflector uh, boosting some light back underneath into those shadows. So I don't think it's as bad as it could have been. Most of the time I just went with the exposure meter in the middle and there was a few times as the sun got stronger that I needed to use a bit of minus compensation. And that was mostly with the, the mallards that have the light plumage on part of their body. So I just had to do a bit of underexposure just to stop that blowing out. I had chosen a really fast shutter speed which was necessary for the action shots but for the general walking around it wasn't really necessary and also for the portraits you could use a much much slower shutter speed with no problem. So I did take a number of portraits of the ducks particularly the mallards but also some moorhens and some coots. So I took hundreds and hundreds of shots trying to get this one and I've got lots of really nice images. I've got ducks uh, walking on the ice, I've got some really nice colours background colours reflected in the ice. Really, really like some of those shots and some nice simple portraits as well. But in terms of trying to get that one defining moment that was really after, I'd probably say I've got maybe two or three, if that, from all the shots I took. And that's just the way it is. It's a quite a low percentage thing. You just have to stick with it, keep persevering. I do think this is a fantastic thing to photograph. It's really good fun. You can get some fantastic images and you don't necessarily need a huge lens like this, a 500 millimeter. Uh, you could definitely do shots like this with probably a 300 millimeter lens, maybe even a 200 millimeter lens, depending on the situation. So next time we get a cold snap, maybe this is something you can do if you've got a local park. Uh, if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you are, uh, click the bell icon for notifications, click on all notifications to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.